بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوت الا بالله لبی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین صلى الله على سيدنا محمد و آله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد و آله محمد اللهم اخلجي من ظلمات الوهم و اكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا عباب رحمتك و انشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين الحمد لله بيهف توفيق تو continue our study of 40 hadith as you remember we were talking about hadith number 29 which is a set of instructions by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to iman ali alayhi salam we reached this point wa alayka bi salat al-layl wa alayka bi salat al-layl wa alayka bi salat al-layl Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam three times which is very important you know when you say something to someone like Amirul Mu'mineen and you are sure that he is very attentive very understanding so once is enough for his understanding but still Rasulullah said three times so that he shows that this is a great message and also people like us that later we read about this hadith we understand that this is not because Rasulullah was worried that maybe it was not heard or it was not listened carefully it's because Rasulullah wants to say this is very very important three times he says وَعَلَيْكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ اللَّيْلِ And then after that three times he says وَعَلَيْكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ الزَّوَالِ وَعَلَيْكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ الزَّوَالِ وَعَلَيْكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ الزَّوَالِ Both of them are salat. We already also before had about Nawafil. So in one hadith, so much emphasis on Salat. Salat Wajib, Salat Mustahab. This shows how important is Salat and in particular uh, something that is not obligatory and you do it out of love. Of course you can do your obligatory Salats also with love but there is a chance that maybe many people who do salat wajib if it was not wajib they would not have done it always at least maybe they would have done it sometimes but those who are committing themselves to wake up in the middle of night and do something which is not wajib shows that they really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Khomeini says, we have mentioned before something about Salatul Layl. So here we only mention some hadith as a kind of uh, reminder and as a kind of uh, supplement to our previous discussion about Salatul Layl. The late Sheikh Hurra Amili Rahmatullah Alai in Vasa Shia quotes from Sheikh Kulaini in Al Kafi. You know that Imam Khomeini many times quotes from Sheikh Kulaini in this 40 hadith. But because of being a matter of uh, scientific piety and scientific you know commitment here he has not quoted directly from Sheikh Kulaini he has quoted from Sheikh Ra'amali in Vasa'il Shia so he mentions this so that if there is any problem any mistake on the quotation of this hadith by Sheikh Hurra Amili, he has not attributed something to Sheikh Kulaini which was not right. 
So whenever we code from someone indirectly, we should mention also the source in between. Many people uh, on website, on internet, they find something. For example, it says there is a, this hadith in Al-Kafi, volume so, page so. And then they put it in another place and then they give reference to Al-Kafi. But have you checked this? Maybe this person didn't, you know, take care of uh, checking. And even if he has checked, you should say that this is taken from him. Someone like Sheikh Hurra Amili, a great scholar and muhaddis, still Imam Khomeini says, I am quoting from him. Doesn't say I'm quoting from Al Kafi. Let alone you find something in someone's book or on website, you know, and you quote directly. No, you should not do that, inshallah. We should all try to go as much as possible to the first uh, source. If not, at least we should say, who has been between us. So, in Vasail from Al-Kafi, it is mentioned that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, An Abdullah ibn Sanan, An Abi Abdullah alayhi salam, Qal, Sharafu al-Mu'mine, Salatuhu bil-Layl. وعز المؤمن كفه عن أعراض الناس. The honor and nobility for a mu'min. Mu'min is by himself or herself very much honored. Even hadith says that حرمت المؤمن. The respect for mu'min is more than Kaaba. Kaaba as a building, as a construction, is not as important as Mu'min. Yes, Kaaba as a concept is something that we are happy, you know, to die and give our life for it. But as building, as bricks and, you know, cement and wood, is not like Mu'min. Although it's great and every piece of it is great for us, but this is the way Islam is teaching us. That the hurma of mu'min, the respect and honor of mu'min is more than Kaaba. But now, if this mu'min does Salatul Layl, this is sharaf, this is a special honor, this is nobility of this mu'min that does Salatul Layl. Is like a crown on his head or her head. Va'izul mu'min and his or her dignity is a matter of safeguarding himself or herself from reputations and honors of people being affected by him or her. Kafuhu an a'rad nas If God forbids I damage someone's reputation or honor of himself or family or herself or her family or anything that belongs to that person, then this would directly damage my own dignity. Because as a moment you have Izza. Inna al Izza talillah wa li Rasulihi wa li Mu'minin. But this Izza also depends on how much you respect the Izza of other Mu'minin and other people. All people karamna bani Adam. All people are honored by Allah and Mu'minin have a special uh, Izza that is on top of that karama for children of Adam. And if I don't show respect to them, then I am endangering my own honor and dignity. So, شرف المؤمن صلاته بالليل وعز المؤمن كفه عن أعراض الناس. The next hadith, which has some similarity with this, is again Abdullah ibn Sanan. 
from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لجبرائيل اعذني رسول الله said to Jibreel preach me give me mawadha advise me if you remember the very first session that we had about this book we talked about the concept of mawadha and we said mawadha is different from giving a general talk or general lecture mawadha has to be practical and has to be addressed to some one or some people you know directly and it's a kind of mentorship or a kind of like a doctor giving prescription is very personal and very particular and somehow direct to one person or one group and in Islam we all need more as a even someone who is giving mu'iza to people, a wa'iz who gives mu'iza to people, he himself needs uh, mu'iza, another wa'iz. One wa'iz inside, but also we need wa'iz outside. So even Rasulullah used to ask Jibra'il to give him mu'iza. And Jibra'il gave him this mu'iza. Ya Muhammad, ishma shi'at. فَإِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ Live as long as you like or as you like as long or in the way that you like as much as you like but فَإِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ But you are going to die you are dying just remember this point live as you like but know that you are dying if you just remember this point. وَأَحْبَبْ مَا شِئْتْ You can love everything you like, anything. But remember, you are going to separate. فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ Then, if you know that you are going to separate, that you will not love it so much or put all your energy and time for something that you are going to lose. وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ Also act as much as you like or anything that you like do whatever you like but فَإِنَّكَ مُلَاقِي but just remember that you are going to see and meet your action your action will be brought to your presence so do something that you will not be ashamed you will not be hurt by it. Then, Sharaful Mu'minis Salatuhu Bilayl, very similar to what we had before. Wa'izzuhu Kafuhu and A'raz and Nas. Exactly the same thing. The honor of Mu'min is Salatul Layl, and the dignity of Mu'min is to stop hurting, harming the reputations of people. Our Sunni brothers also, I saw that they have this hadith. Exactly, Jibra'il, you know, was asked by Rasulullah to give Mu'iza. It's very similar. The only difference I noticed was, maybe they have this version also, but I didn't uh, have enough time to make investigation. But I found they say Sharaful Mu'min Salatuhu Bilayl Wa'izzuhu Istighna'uhu Anil Nas Izzuhu Istighna'uhu Anil Nas That is also very good and it's you know making lots of sense and we have similar to that in our hadith the dignity of Mu'min is to feel free from need with respect to what people have. We have in many hadith, you know, things like Qat amma fi If I don't 
uh, ask people to help me as much as of course possible then this gives me dignity and honor or at least keeps my dignity and honor intact so that's uh, what they have what we have here is kafuhu and iraz and nas but the point of reference was sharaful mu'min salatuhu billayl then we have another hadith from imam sadiq alayhi salam al mal wal banun zinatul hayat ad dunya money and children are zina adornment in the worldly life in dunya if you have money you have children then you feel very you know, good and powerful etc but but when you do eight rak asalatul layl and then one rak, you know, we have eight and two and one. Of course, eight is four salat of two raka and then two raka shaf, one raka wet. So the focus here is on salatul layl and uh, wet. This is zinatul akhira. So in akhira, those who have this, in akhira, your zina is not your money or children. Of course, if you have trained good children or good students or do, done anything, that's another issue. Uh, but just having children, even if they are, you know, very, I don't know, educated, very good and, you know, even kind to you, necessarily doesn't mean that in akhira they would give you honor unless they are good people and you had a role in their upbringing. So, Thaman Raka'at min akhir al-layl wal-witr zinatul akhira waqad yajma'uhum Allah li-aqwamin And sometimes Allah bring them together for some people. They have zinatul dunya and zinatul akhira. They have money, they have children, they do salatul layl, so they have zina of dunya and akhira. And finally, the last hadith about Salatul Layl here. Shaykh Mufid Rahmatullah Alai quotes this hadith from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, Imam Khomeini is quoting from Hurra Amidi in Wasail al Shia. Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is good for people that when they wake up for Salatul Layl, still they are sleepy. They are sleepy and sometimes, you know, with difficulty, they keep their eyes open. But sometimes they feel, what type of Salatul Layl I am doing? I am very sleepy and, you know, uh, I'm not enjoying that much. I just want to finish and, you know, for example, maybe sleep again or whatever. This, this is Bashara for them. That still it is good. Still Allah very much loves this attempt that despite your uh, pleasure from sleeping, you leave your bed and go for Salatul Layl. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله إذا قام العبد لذيذ مذجعه والنعاس في عينه ليرضي ربه بالصلاة الليلة. If a servant of Allah stands up from bed and there is لذيذ مذجعه there is a pleasure of sleeping and being in bed you know especially if it is I don't know, cold and, you know, the bed is warm, etc. Nowadays, Alhamdulillah, we have lots of facilities. You know, in the past, sometimes people used to go out, you know, and with difficulty find water. And inshallah, I will mention for you a story of Ayatollah Mutahari that I just remembered. 
So it was very difficult at that time. Now, Alhamdulillah, we have lots of facilities and we should be grateful. So if someone stands up from sleep and still, you know, wants to enjoy, but says, no, I have to do Salatul Layl. I spent few minutes with my Lord. Still, he's a sleepy, she's a sleepy. It's like a kind of, you know, eyes are still with difficulty open. But the reason is He wants to push, he wants to please his or her Lord with this Salatul Layl. Bahallahu bihil malaika. Mubahat. Mubahat means when I am very happy with something and I am saying to other people, you know, that I am very happy with this. Uh, sometimes it can be bad, sometimes it can be good. For example, we have that famous hadith. Uh, Whoever learns in the sake of, for the sake of doing mubahat with ulama, le yubahiya bihil ulama, or yumariya bihil sufaha. For example, I learn in order to say to ulama that I have lots of knowledge and you know I know this, I have read that book, I had this teacher. This is negative mubahat. But positive mubahat is that when there is something good and out of appreciation, out of gratitude. You mention it, not in order to boost yourself or, you know, raise yourself above others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased to the extent that he would address the angels with joy and appreciation and says Ama tarawna abdi hadha. don't you see my servant qad qama min ladid mazja'ihi lissalatin lam afrudha alay he has stood up or she has stood up from bed for a prayer that I have not made obligatory. Be witnesses that I have forgiven him or her. Of course, this kind of language that we are using is a language that uh, you have to be uh, aware that it's sefat fil and we are using it in the way that must be accompanied by negating anything physical. So when I say Allah is pleased, Allah is happy, it's not emotional, it's not, you know, something, a feeling that like what we have. It means a condition which in essence is similar to when we are very happy with something in essence is the same but without physical and sensational uh, additions so this is that much allah loves those who do salatul layl that he would even mention to the angels that I am very pleased and I'm going to forgive this person. The story that I wanted to I just remembered is a very beautiful story. And when Ayatollah Mutahari was uh, assassinated and was martyred, uh, Ayatollah Muntaziri mentioned this on TV and it's available. Because they used to be for many years, uh, you know, studying together and even they used to live in the same hujra when they were not married. So he says, Ayatollah Mutahari was very committed to Salatul Layl. And he was every time telling me, you know, do Salatul Layl. 
And he says, I sometimes used to say, uh, the water of the, uh, you know, the you know, fountain in the Madrasiya Faiziye next to the shrine of Lady Masuma is Madrasiya Faiziye. And they had, you know, hose, they had a you know, fountain. And I said, the water is not clean and it is not good for my eyes because I had some problem with my eyes. There was no pipe water, you know, so they had to use the water was inside there. So he said, sometimes I used to bring some excuses. So one night he said, in my uh, uh, sleep, I had a dream that Osman ibn Hunayf, who was a companion of Amir al Mumnia Salam and appointed by him also, right, you know, at a certain point, uh, brought me a message, a kind of paper, on which it was written. Something like this, as far as I remember, Hadi Baraatun Laka Minanar. This is a protection for you from fire. And he said, I was in my dream thinking Uthman ibn Hunayf, me, uh, you know, after so many centuries, you know, I was trying to find out, you know, what is happening at that time. Uh, Atullah Mutahari awakened me and said, I have brought you water from the river. So he had gone uh, to the river, the, the river passing by the shrine and Madrasi uh, Faizie. So he had gone in the night, middle of night, all the way, bring him water and said, you know, I have brought you clean water, you know, so make your, you know, wazoo with this. So this story is very interesting about how uh, Ayatollah Mutahari was that much committed and how this was uh, showed in the dream as a bara'atun laka min al-nar. It was very interesting. So the next thing in the hadith is alayka بالصلاه الوسطى وعليك بالصلاه الوسطى وعليك بالصلاه الوسطى three times rasulullah emphasized on salat al-wusta and salat al-wusta means salat zuhr but perhaps here means nafila of salat zuhr Salat al-Zuhr is very, very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Hafidhu ala salawat wa salat al-wusta wa qumu lillahi qanati. Surah Baqarah, verse 238. Hafidhu ala salawat is general. It includes all the salawat, but still Allah singles out salat al-wusta, salat al-Zuhr, the middle one. Because it's the middle of the day, it's a middle salat, and it's so important that Allah mentions this. The common view among ulama is that salat al wusta here is salat al zuhr, and this is the first salat that Adam Allah Nabi Nawali Wali Salam learned from Jibrail. So Imam Khomeini says it seems that this Salat Zawal that Rasulullah is saying means Salat Zor with its belongings, which is including proper timing and Nafile of Zohr. Nafile of Zohr is very important. Salat Zohr. We should give a special attention to it and part of it is by if we cannot do nafila of asr or maghreb nafila of zohr is very important that we should try to uh, not miss it at least part of it or if not you know as do of it but 
at least part of it inshallah so this is a second part of this uh, discussion for today and then we have a discussion about the Quran that I would leave it for next time because there are few chapters about the Quran but before I go to the I finish this I would like to mention what Imam Khomeini says at the end of this part after talking about Salatul Layl and Salatul Zawal he has a good discussion about significance of Salat and says you know if we are not careful about Salat for example we said we have to be very careful about Salat al -Zuhr. but in general if we say Salat but without carefulness any time that happens in any condition this is not good and this would deprive us from many benefits of Salat and maybe even if we are considered as people who underestimate Salat we would not die as a Muslim because a requirement of being a true Muslim is to respect Salat he refers to a hadith that Imam Baghir alayhi salam said that once Rasulullah was in masjid sitting in masjid and a person entered and he started saying prayer very quickly so was not going to ruku properly sujood properly hadith says qama yusalli falam yutimma ruku'ahu wa la sujooda was not you know completing ruku quickly and Rasulullah said that he uh, is like a bird just you know uh, bending or trying to for example you know take something from the uh, ground if this is the way maybe this is exception but if he dies and this is his salat then he would die not in my religion so being a muslim very much depends also on how we uh, regard salat and then he says you know in dunya if you have a for example appointment important appointment or if someone is going to give you something which is important for you for example some money or what i don't know some something you know that you like your nafs automatically tries to remember that if salat is important for us our nafs tries to remember that so we have to understand the significance of salat then automatically at the time of salat we will be alert and then he says let me read for you this in farsi this sentence i found it very interesting he says in namaz hay panzgane ke amud din va paye muhkam iman ast these five salat prayers are the pillar of religion and firm foundation of iman و در اسلام چیزی بعد از ایمان به اهمیت آن نیست. After having ایمان nothing is like salat. Among everything. Salat comes right after ایمان. بعد از توجهات نوریه باطنیه و صور غیبیه ملکوتیه که غیر از حق تعالی و خاصان درگاه او کسی نداند یکی از جهات مهمه که در آن هست 
این تکرار تذکر حق با آداب و اوضاع الهی که در آن منظور گردیده است رابطه انسان را با حق تعالی و عوالم غیبی محکم می کند He says after some spiritual things about salat that no one other than Allah and his select servants know there are something that no one knows except Allah and his close servants and that is توجهات نوریه باطنیه there are some deep impacts of salat on our inner self and there are some forms of uh, spiritual uh, realities that if someone has vision of malakut can understand we don't understand the malakuti face of salat so he said apart from that that we don't understand awliya Allah understand one of the important things about salat is that when we keep repeating salat in this design that Allah has made it would make our relation with Allah so strong and our relation with the hidden world Allah and the hidden world so strong that it would never be separated from us and when we go through pressures of death and afterwards and the fears etc salat that we have said in dunya would help us not to forget our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says this salat is mu'inuka fi ulaka wa ukhraak it's your help in dunya and akhirah and we should be very careful not to underestimate our salat inshallah may Allah inshallah include us among people who establish salat inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin